Ever heard about the machine gun mounted on a scooter? Or the guided missile piloted by kamikaze pigeons? Join us today as we peer anxiously through the fog of war and unveil the craziest military machines ever made. Zuba Meaning bison in Russian, the largest military hovercraft in the world has been scaring the bejesus out of coastal communities since the early 90s. Able to ferry three fully laden tanks, 10 armored personnel carriers or 140 paratroopers, it has a crew of 33 and comes equipped with five gas turbine engines, each generating 12,100 shaft horsepower. It zooms along at a lively 55 knots, 63 miles per hour, thanks to these gargantuan 5.5 meter propellers. When it gets in a scrap, Zuba can deploy twin faster 4M surface-to-air missile launchers and two AK-630M Gatling guns, each rocking six pokey 30mm barrels. Zuba's capabilities also include dropping sea mines, not to mention two Ogon 22 round 140mm rocket launchers for vaporizing beach defenses. It's also quite happy charging around on land. Maybe give it a wide berth. The Rye What's cooler than a gun? 12 guns. The frankly preposterous Ribaldequin, aka organ gun, was a medieval war machine first deployed by Edward III of England during the Hundred Years' War. Twelve small-caliber iron barrels are arranged in a row, the idea being that even if one barrel misses, one of the others will probably find the mark. No doubt effective as a deterrent, terrifying armor-clad French knights on their poncy white horses, the Ribaldequin nonetheless had a major drawback. You could only fire it once. After that, some poor sap would have to painstakingly muzzle-load all dozen barrels, by which time your sneering foe will have either retreated or brutally murdered you, or possibly both. The Vesper 150 Tab a bazooka mounted on a scooter. What could go wrong? The Vespa Tap was a short-lived wheeze dreamt up by the French army in the 1950s. Essentially, a regular civilian Vespa with an 82-inch gun sticking out the front, they were designed to be sneakily parachuted in behind enemy lines. The plan was to drop the Vespas in pairs. One would have the giant gun, and another some additional ammo and a machine gun tripod. The nippy pair could scoot to an advantageous position, assemble their kit anti-tank gun, and raise merry hell. The bazooka was able to vent propellant gases out the back, so there was little in the way of recoil, so at a pinch it could even be fired with the scooter in motion. Sounds mad, but 600 were built by a company called the Ateliers de Construction de Motocycles et Automobiles between 1956 and 1959. Lund Class Ecranoplan In an ideal world, we'd all be a lot more familiar with the Ecranoplans. These so-called ground-effect vehicles are basically planes designed to zoom along at ultra-low altitudes, around 20 meters. It's a lot more efficient than high-altitude flight, and farther than ground-level transport and capable of carrying massive loads across oceans. But they're also dangerously prone to colliding with things, not least unexpected waves. Anyway, in the 1980s, the Soviet Union built the Lund-class military Ekranoplan, the largest and most ambitious Ekranoplan ever, under the exciting codename Project 903. It could carry 100 tons, roughly the same mass Elon Musk is trying to yeet into orbit aboard Starship. The plan was for it to blow up warships, perfect for the job as it was fast and capable of flying under enemy radar. The Ekranoplans had six missile launchers ranged along the back of the fuselage, each capable of launching a P-270 Mosquito-guided missile, just one of which could sink an aircraft carrier, by the way. The Ekranoplans' eight jet engines could carry it a thousand miles on a single tank of fuel, but its 242 feet length and 144 feet wingspan was too ungainly. Plus, the inherent danger of flying at low altitude meant this idea never quite got off the ground. The Molodets Missile Train as the Cold War wore on, the Soviet Union was confronted with a problem. The US knew exactly where its nuclear ICBM silos were and was contemplating a preemptive strike. Where could the Soviets hide their precious missiles? On a train, of course. With 99,000 miles of railway lines across the land for shunting around these so-called Molodets, a creepy, fully launch-capable nuclear battle station, the idea was the Pentagon could never disarm the USSR. And that was a vital edge. Lots of clever engineering went into Molodets. The Soviets at the time preferred liquid fuel propulsion for their rockets. But that was no good, as it was dangerously volatile if the train journey happened to be bumpy. And bear in mind, this 23.3 meter long Molodets missile packed the equivalent force of 900 Hiroshima bombs. Fitting that in a train car required some innovative workarounds, like this space-saving inflatable nose cone. Fortunately, it's the only part that ever blew up. The Pigeon Guided Missile Way before all that, in 1943, the US had an entirely different problem to overcome. 
how to accurately guide missiles inside hostile Nazi territory. Step forward the unflappable B.F. Skinner, a renowned psychologist and inventor. He'd noticed while pottering in his garden that pigeons seemed pretty good at navigating. So he proposed recruiting three pigeons who'd be trained to recognize military targets from the air and peck furiously at a target. Cables attached to the plucky birds' heads would steer the missile and, hey presto, victory! Except for the pigeons who would die. In a coup for Skinner, the National Research Defense Committee awarded him $25,000 to prototype his invention, which apparently had some limited success in trials. Alas, no such missile was ever deployed in the field. Big Dog. You'll have seen those lovable Boston Dynamics robots grinding and backflipping to upbeat chart hits. Well, imagine if the army had one. Except they did. Big Dog was intended as a 21st century successor to your classic wartime pack horse, carting heavy supplies and ammo across tricky terrain in support of human soldiers. Somehow they were deemed too noisy for combat and cancelled by top brass. Fear not, another US firm called Ghost Robotics has only gone and put a great big gun on the back of its robot dog. The Spur, or Special Purpose Unmanned Rifle, blocks an effective range of 1,200 meters, 30 times optical zoom on the sight, and thermal camera for targeting in the dark. Think that's scary? Just imagine what the Chinese are probably working on in secret. What do you think? Know any other mental military machines? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe for more high-caliber tech content.